Welcome back to Radio Tunes. Episode 7. The best podcast on the internet. The best one. It stars us? <laughs> ranked, <laughs> ranked number one in the world. I don't, I don't know what sources you're using. I don't think they're accurate. <laughs> I'm just going to start every podcast with like a line. The number one podcast. Yeah. <laughs> That's good, man. What'd you, what'd you do this week? We just went to 7-Eleven to get drinks. <laughs> oh my God. Just to like warm up for the podcast and those <laughs> there's so many homeless people there man Such... and and people like like just asking us for money left and right yeah it just and you know the funny thing was um i was like you know what let's go to that one like this specific 7-eleven because it was it's... nicer right or no it... because it's near a police station and i thought you know what probably they probably have to deal with this a lot so it's whatever nope there's a lot of a lot of homeless people and some guy was bothering steve for 20 cents it was 50 cents i didn't have 50 <laughs> cents just for the record but i i don't know i just... and then he was like can you just buy me coffee and we we're like oh my gosh can't i was like look man i'm just as broke as you <laughs> i'm gonna be honest with you <laughs> that was pretty funny just people standing outside of the liquor store and everything it's just i don't know it's just i just thought it was really funny because i was like you know what let's go to this one because i don't think there's gonna be anybody there and and lo and behold, there lo was. and behold, there's tons of people. Also, I'm pretty sure one of those guys was trying to like not any of the people we mentioned, but there was another teenager there who I think was trying to steal something because oh, he kept okay. being all shifty. Yeah, like he he like there was clearly like we were in the back of the store, remember? And he and he's like, oh, excuse me, guys, and he walks like in like into the corner of the store where we were. Yeah, shifting around. I was just like, ugh, he's... I don't know, man. Giving, giving money to homeless <laughs> people has always been like a weird... It's always been like a weird subject with me. I I always hear like they're on drugs and stuff, so I try not to give them money, you know? Yeah, I know. It's 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 a tough sell. I, I hear I like... Um, I remember hearing like this thing on the radio one time. This cop was talking about how they can stand like on a freeway ramp and ask for money for like four hours because you know they don't have jobs. Right. They can make like two hundred, three hundred bucks in one day. Yeah, if you just cal- by begging for money. Because and then they and they just go buy drugs, because if if they were sober, they would be in a homeless shelter. You know. Mm. So I just I don't. I never know what to do in that situation. When homeless I know what do you do like. Money. And plus, uh, I used to have a similar problem because remember I worked in Blockbuster at Blockbuster. <clears throat> for our younger listeners, Blockbuster is a place where you rent movies and games. Like, you have to physically go to the store to rent them and bring them back to your house. And then return them after, like, two days. It's a weird concept, I know. It's like an analog Netflix kind of thing. <laughs> anyway, there was a guy who three times in a row showed up. Like, I would open the store on Saturdays. Yeah. Three times in a, three times in a row. Like, three Saturdays. He came up to me and was like, hey, man, I just ran out of gas. I'm traveling to Phoenix and I'm just coming through. Those are the California. scariest ones when they have like a whole scam. Yeah, he, 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 but like this, the first time I was like, hey man, I actually don't have any cash. I, you know, and I didn't because uh-huh. I was a broke college student. I didn't have any cash. All I had was my, my card, you know. Um, so I was like, sorry man, I can't help you today. He's like, oh, okay, well, whatever. Second time he came up, I was like, he's, does he not realize that I work here and I probably, He's probably talked to me already. I was like, well, can you point out your car? He's like, there was two cars in the parking lot, mine and my manager's. And he pointed to my manager's car. I was like, that's my manager's car. And then he, like, walks away. Doesn't even, like, Damn. do what. Then the third time he came up, I was like, dude, you've talked to me three times at this point. And he just, like, turned around and left. But I was like, wow, he doesn't even remember me. Like, I, he even if you. I would have given him money, I wonder if he would have even remembered me. It's his routine, man. He does that every single day. Probably, but I, I get you, man. It's always like there's some people who need help, but then there's you know the other side of that coin is like people just scamming you for money. Yeah, I get it. But you know, I was actually uh, I was actually paranoid because recently something like that happened with uh, eBay. Uh, I I I was asked to ship a package like internationally. Oh. And the guy said like, "Oh, I never got it. Can I get a refund?" And he had like this whole story about. You know, oh, you oh I ordered something and it was from my my little brother and all this shit. Uh, and I believe him for the most part. You know, I gave him a refund, but I've heard that like on on like bigger stuff, yeah, two hundred, three hundred dollars maybe. Like, 
they'll play that scam and then just ask for the refund and then steal your item at customs and then <laughs> are you serious yeah did you get the item back no so i don't know what the fuck happened to it but i'm i trust the guy enough that he, you know like it probably just got lost in the mail so well that's wow or internationally I'm, right or i'm an idiot but I, that's the last either time way I I, international either you know? way i think your conscience is clear you don't have to worry about it because you know it was so. like a 20 dollar item <laughs> It wasn't that Jeez, for real? It was like $20? And that, then going through customs, that's, that's probably... That's why I don't think that it was a scam, you know? Oh. They usually would... I assume they would only do it with, like, you know... A high-priced item? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. But what are you going to do, man? It's just... Whatever. You just got to let it go. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Fuck it. <laughs> Chump change. Chump change to this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, what happened this week? Oh, we got your new Hercules toy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. I got a Xena and I got a Hercules, a uh, Kevin Sorbo Hercules. Yeah, we were actually at that place because this weekend we were looking for an Earthworm Gym toy. Yeah, I, I, I we were talking about Earthworm Gym last week, and it was funny because we watched the uh, we watched the first episode or something on YouTube, and uh, the intro to it like the intro it has a pretty good intro, but it was I just I like the it, jingle. I, I just thought it was funny because we immediately watched the Freakazoid intro afterwards because it was like recommended night, on the side. Night and day. And it's just like a million times better. It was like way better animation and it <laughs> had a better song. Everything was better. I was like, damn, like I feel so sorry for us from Jim. They just didn't have the budget. I also, bet. they didn't have Steven Spielberg's name on the yeah. I mean, on the intro. The guy's got a, quite a reputation, I hear. Yeah, and I. It was really cool because the place we went to is a place... Well, first of all, we went to Frankenson's, which, you know, if if you guys don't know it, it's like this... Um, it's the like best a way I can, meet, right? Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a flea market, but for, you know, nostalgic stuff, old toys. I would, you know, a couple of years ago, I would have said, yeah, it's like video game stuff or like nerdy stuff. Yeah. Uh, but as of last week, it's just fidget spinners. Everybody uh, and their mom was selling every fidget single spinners. Every has fidget spinners. And then... There's okay, so the setup at a Frankenstein's is it's literally just a big warehouse, right? right, Where they store stuff and ship stuff out. So they have those like truck ports along one side, Uh those were all opened up. And you said there was like a couple of people like in those areas that where they didn't used to be before, and they're all just fidget spinners. (laughs) Yeah, I was getting so upset. And like when we first got there, I would say what a quarter of frankincense was baseball cards and sports memorabilia yeah those last there was like the last three rows were definitely that stuff recently though all that stuff is being replaced by just just what my brother lovingly refers to as nerd culture crap (laughs) which is like oh it's a hat with the green lantern symbol on it or like this shirt that just has like nerd life on it or whatever. Yeah. anything that has like a mushroom on it. I actually it or... saw a couple there <laughs> and they were wearing, one of them had a shirt that said, I love you and it had Han Solo on it. And the other one said, I know. And the other one had Princess Leia Ooh. that said, I know. <laughs> the whole Frankincense, that's all it is now. Every Everybody, because me and my brother used to go there when I was in high school and college, like around that time. We'd go there because first of all, it was like they were selling like old school toys uh, cart like NES cartridges. That's probably where most of my NES, SNES collection came from. And card games. Shit. And card games we used to exactly. Be in a card game yeah, stuff a like lot. Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic. Well, right now, <clears throat> I swear all of its fidget spinners and. You know like, what? A, uh, a lot of a, a lot of stands too just have walls of those pop figures. Oh you know, my there, gosh! There was one I can't stand, wait for those to go away. There was this one stand that had like. A, it had like old '90s toys in the front, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Hey, let's check this this booth out. Let's go inside." <laughs> oh, yeah. And the and all of the interior <laughs> along all the walls was these fucking pop figures. That was so funny because like it was it was exactly how you said the outside was coated in like Spawn and and uh, like Todd McFarlane stuff and and um, to, uh, like those baseball figurines and blah, blah blah. But as soon as you entered, the whole wall was pop figurines. Wallpaper. I mean, jeez. And then I was like, let's look in this corner right here. I was like, no, all pop figurines. Yeah. Whole thing's pop figurines. I can't wait for that trend to die. I, I just really wanted, can't. I just wanted that sp- that earthworm gym <laughs> with the spring loaded head. That... And yeah, because okay, so there's two of them, right? There's two earthworm gyms. Yeah. There's the there's the one that's just the standard action figure has right. nothing special about it. And then one that has a button on the back when you push it, the head launches out. That's the one I had t- as a kid. But the one that you said is a standard figure or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think I think that one is actually a re-release 
Is it? Yeah, it came out uh, like in 2010 along with the remaster of the game. Oh, okay. And that one is uh, is actually like expensive because I've seen it. I've seen it there before, and I asked I asked the guy like how much, and he was like thirty five dollars. I was like, man. Ugh. Or buy Never thirty of these fidget thing. spinners, whichever makes you happy. Yeah. <laughs> also, what I saw there, um, there was there's just a couple vendors. I don't know if you picked them out, but like there's probably three or four vendors that sell like these really intricate statues. You know the Iron Man Anti-statues. statue. Statues. No, no. <laughs> no, these like remember they have like the whole Iron Man set of Tony Stark. Oh, like all those not, really they're not statues, n- they're like figures, right? They're figures, yeah, yeah. They're there like they are ones that you can dress up, and they have like <clears throat> exactly, face. but they have like re- like realistic looking faces and right, stuff. Right, yeah, I've so seen those. Those guys, right? I kid you not, three out of the four ones had NES classics just sitting up there, just one that they had, and I guarantee you, if I would have asked, he's like, "How much for that thing?" Probably been like three hundred bucks. Oh yeah, they're notorious for doing that. They just buy. <laughs> they just buy everything. They buy stuff and, sell and it like they, crazy. they resell it like crazy. You know what's funny though? Those, those um, those toys you were talking about, like yeah. those realistic like models, or whatever those figures. Yeah. I've never seen anyone fucking buy one. I, I see like display cases full of them, and they look really cool. It, but we see this. We haven't been there in what, a couple months. Yeah. I haven't seen one of those change. Yeah, like they don't move. And I remember asking one one time too, <coughs> like when they were new, which was like a couple years back. They had um. It had a Dark Knight one. It was like Batman yeah. Dark Knight, and I was like, "Oh, how much for, how much for the that Batman one?" And he was like four hundred and seventy five dollars or something. And I was like, uh-huh. "Okay, uh, well, see ya." Yeah, I don't want it that bad. More recently, I asked about a Back to the Future figurine, and it was part the part two one because it came with like that in, the, f- in that style where it's all realistic. yeah exactly okay. And I was really surprised when when I asked about it because it came with. It came with the little communicator, his little floating skateboard, the hoverboard, uh-huh. and something else. And I was like, "How much?" And he said, "One seventy-five." That's pretty. That's pretty. And that's if if those prices are correct. Uh-huh. I mean, that's a big drop, right? I mean, I can understand if he quoted me that price for three hundred for the Iron Man one because that's a the armor is all made out of like metal. Yeah. And and like the dolls encased underneath it, so I get it. It's like getting real metal. Thin- I'm saying metal as in like it could be aluminum or something, oh, okay. but it's like shiny and it's cold to the touch kind of thing. But I, I, I'm with you. I've never seen those things move. You know, because like whenever they make toys that have like real fabric, yeah, it tends to look bad. But on those things, they actually do a pretty good job. I think it's because it might be like a thinner material, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, you're right. I've never seen those two. The only thing that I've seen survive all of this was the Disney pins. That thing has gotten huge. <laughs> yeah, quite a lucrative market, these Disney pins. <laughs> and it was, at first, it was just that one little booth in the back, and now it's grown to like three or four booths. Yeah. This right next, yeah, that's the only thing. Uh, and then. I mean, they, they like trade them and stuff. It's like a whole lifestyle. I, I don't understand it. You know, I, I don't know. I bought one. I bought a Jessica Rabbit one one time. Did you buy a Lilo and Stitch one too? No. No, okay. I saw a Jessica Rabbit one, and I was like, how much? He was like, two bucks. I was like, fuck it, why not? And, and then you I, just, then I you just like throwing out the bills on that one. Yeah. No, I, I think I lost it. I don't even know where it is. So that's my it's money ex- well spent. That's my experience with Disney pins. Man, I just, every and also, and again, going back to the pop figurine things, everybody's selling those. Yeah. Like they get one that's supposed to be quote unquote exclusive, mm-hmm. and it's exclusive for like two weeks, and then they start mass producing them. There was a, there used to be a woman there too that sold like old McDonald's toys. And she had all these like McDonald's. Uh, she had like a Ronald McDonald that was like like a plastic one that would sit on a bench. Yeah. And then she had like those like displays where they had the toys and stuff. Yeah. And I remember we hadn't gone there like in like a long fucking time. And then when we went back, it like turned out she had passed away or something, and they had turned her booth into like a memorial for her. That was really cool. And I was like, oh, that's that's cool. I wanted to go back because there was um, I always wanted. The Inspector Gadget toys. They they had like oh a, yeah the one that you had to build right yeah the Matthew Broderick uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Inspector Gadget film that probably sucked. I don't think I ever saw the movie, but I, I always wanted the toys because if you if you assembled all the toys, it became like a Inspector Gadget toy. It was like oh yeah like a Voltron Inspector Inspector Gadget. Yeah. And you it know, was, it's not as impressive as I thought it was because I've I've looked at it no, now. No, it's not. It's I, not very impressive. I saw it on eBay and it looks pretty dumb. I remember actually, 
all of the the pieces of it were like yeah. shitty toys. They were not. But but it was enticing to put like the whole thing together. Yeah, I mean that was the dream yeah. as a kid, you know. <laughs> the dream. If you had them all, but like the one the the McDonald's by our house always had like the leg. Just the leg. And that's all you like. You, like before Exodia, this was you know <laughs> before Ex- <laughs> this, Wow. <laughs> this was the thing to assemble was Inspector Gadget Matthew Broderick. Oh, yeah. I forget what was the because to- the cool thing about quote unquote cool thing about the Inspector Gadget thing was uh-huh. that every arm leg blah 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 had like a fold out tool to it. Yeah, it was like its own toy. I right. remember his belt was like. I don't like, remember what the torso did. His ball. His his balls. <laughs> 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 have balls. His uh, his belt. Inspector balls. His belt was like a watch. That was that the on. torso then? Yeah. No, actually, I have. Because no remember, idea. It, had, it was two legs, two arms, and it was torso, like torso and the head, wasn't it? Or was the head a? It, it was a torso with the head, I believe, and okay. then a hat. He had a hat that had a propeller on it. Maybe the torso was part of the head or something, because I, I don't remember this toy all that well. Man, but like we we've missed we we never all we ever got was like, and I think mom still has it in the back somewhere. It's just a leg and an arm, <laughs> and I don't even know if <laughs> I don't I don't even know what they did. The thing about those um, those toys back in the day, if you got like the Earthworm Jim one that I had, uh-huh. if you had anything that it would like come off of it, you'd uh-huh. lose it instantly, and that's yeah. exactly what happened with the with the. Earthworm Jim. I lost the gun. I lost snot, and I lost like the only thing that I kept was the Jim toy came with three little side things, which mm-hmm. was snot, his like little tiny red pistol, which and, was green for some reason. Like all the accessories he came with were green, um, and two, then the the bigger gun. They had two actually. There was a he had a separate he had a set of weapons that was green, but I remember later on when they reprinted it or something they made them red they made them red and i did i did i was like okay you know what you know what really sucks i was i remember this very very like clearly clearly is that this one time i actually got my acrylic paints and i set up this whole thing to like paint these toys the correct color Uh uh-huh and then I left them like out in the sun on this like really like thin paper towel uh-huh. or whatever. And I got them. And as soon as I touched it, it all came off. I was like, I left it out there for like a good week. Problem is like acrylic on plastic uh-huh. just doesn't, it just won't stay on it. Oh, There's nothing okay. to grip. So it just slides right off. Probably I was so like proud of myself for painting it so what, nicely. What would you too. do with that? Like spray paint or something? For, for plastic? Yeah. I don't know. Like I, I remember later on. They develop these um, spray, spray, uh, spray paint bottles that actually spray on like lawn furniture, like the plastic ones, so you can oh, okay. coat them. But for then, nah, it just wouldn't, just didn't have anything to stay on. I was so bummed. I was like, I can't make this thing red. It's just green. Ugh, it was awful. We had a, a set of red shit though too. But that's, I think that's the re-release one you bought. Yeah. Because mine were all green, even <laughs> even snot on yours was red. Which yeah. didn't make any sense. I think that's the more common one. And anytime I look at pictures of that toy online, they're all everything everything is red. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Mine was mine was green for sure. That's why I so was so pissed. Cause like you see the gun, you see it in the game, you see it everywhere, and plus it just looks better because Jim is blue and white and it has a little pink in it, so like the red complements the color set of the action figure. So I was like the toy makers don't care. They, d- they wanna make it <laughs> they wanna make it cheap. Oh man, <laughs> I, would, I would hate that man. I mean, to be honest, like even these toys I have of Hercules right here, they're not amazing, <laughs> and that always bummed me out as a kid when I would like. It, that's it, not true. That's a shirtless Herc over yeah. there. So that's that's pretty amazing. <laughs> he has a humongous torso. Dude. <laughs> he looks really weird. He looks like the He-Man version of Hercules. Yeah. it looks really bad. Uh, like when I would, when I was little, I, I would hate it when uh, something that I like would get shitty toys. You know. That's like everything. It's it's exactly everything because the only ones that I remember were like really great were the Ninja Turtle sets. Ninja Turtle sets were always good because they didn't just do a Ninja Turtle set; they would do something and add something else to it. Yeah, they had a. I remember we had variants that had like armor on them. <clears throat> the yeah. ones that look like um, the ones where you would put them inside this armor, and the armor would make them like twice as big. Yeah, it was like almost like a, a then, exoskeleton. Kind and then of thing. you would take the armor off. Yeah, and you could build a separate thing with it. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, I remember those. Those were awesome. The only thing was I lost all the armor to mine. 
I had Raphael and I lost it. The everything. funny thing is, like, when you put the, the weapons in their hands uh-huh. without their armor, they were, like, humongous. Just, like, gigantic. Like, Leo had a sword, uh-huh. right? But it was, like, twice his size. Oh, because he had to have the armor to But once you look... put the armor on and everything with him, it f- it was, like, it was proportional. Oh, but if okay. you didn't have it, it just looked weird. I remember this one set that our neighbor got where they were like extra mutated turtles okay and they they were more like they could move more they had more joints and stuff and you could move them more but he only got like a donatello which is the worst turtle no, i'm kidding uh he but he got that one and so we had like all these different variants of turtles we even had the ones where you could open their shells and put stuff in their back because turtles were huge man they... well it's not that it's just like the toy makers were like listen it's just turtles we've these toys have been coming out for 30 years we now we gotta have new turtles we gotta have new... something else to do with these turtles it was the same thing with street sharks i remember street oh sharks. oh my gosh we had the original ones and then they started making like variants of them with different stuff they didn't ha- they would have different colors and they would be mutated and all that but they were they were never good as the original ones I like love, i had i really love those street shark toys they were the commercials were better than the cartoon, remember? Like you the car- so? the the t- no, remember the commercials that would come out with them animated in the oh, commercials? Oh yeah, yeah. Looked a million times better. I always loved when commercials had animation. I don't they know why. They looked way way better. There was actually because a- it was only like it was thirty seconds of an animation, but somebody was taking their time with the animation. Yeah. you know why? I remember um, Pokemon commercials. Oh my gosh! Always looked... had like amazing animation. There was one where uh, these kids are trading like with the link cable, and they're walking across the link cable. Yeah, right? it's across two houses, and I remember the animation that was so good, and I was like, man, I wish the, the cartoon, cartoon looked yeah, like this. I really wish the cartoon looked like that. <clears throat> it's because they spend like their their months just doing these twi- like twenty second. second yeah. It's like they can just keep working on it and working on it and working on it, and they look amazing because it's just like five seconds there's of them a, walking across this thing there's there's even like a sonic uh commercial there's a sonic commercial where he would like pop out of the box and do something oh i love those and then like come back into the box and i was like dang that's so cool i'm pretty sure real. that was the one where he like literally popped out of his box shook his finger at and you went and then in. went back in yeah, yeah those were great cool, see man. but i i like that because people spent money on animation back in the day the old cookie cookie chris commercial used to have a dog and a cop Mm-hmm. I think it's called Cookie Cop, actually. I don't remember, but those were great because like they they were the they were old school cartoon looking dudes, mm-hmm. so they were all like chubby and had like these thin little arms. Yeah. So that means they could you know nobody cared if they were all squishy and bendy and blah blah blah. Yeah. So those commercials were great. I think the I think why I liked I think why I liked the Pokemon or like um, Sonic commercials more though was because. It was like animation in real life. I was such a like. I was obsessed with like anytime cartoons invaded real life, you know, like when Space Jam or like Roger Rabbit came out. Oh, I thought Jam. they were like the coolest things ever because <laughs> like, especially like Roger Rabbit for example. Like you had to have like a crazy amount of animation to like look real, you know, yeah. or to fit in with like the 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 actors and stuff, you know. Like, yeah, you told me once about how they actually, because I, I never followed up with the um, Roger Rabbit. That that movie is bananas when you think about it, because it's two competing animation houses contributing to this one movie. Because you got Mickey and Bugs in the same movie. Yeah, that's never gonna happen. Donald ever Duck again. <laughs> and then Daffy Duck also just dueling pianos. That was great. Uh, but I remember you telling me about it how they did the. Like, the actors did their thing, obviously, but right. when they did the animation over it, you told me that they lit the animation cell with realistic lighting. Yeah, they did some crazy, like, four-step process of when it came to, like, coloring and lighting and shading the cells mm-hmm. so that it looks like they're in real life. Right. It's but like a ton of fucking work. When the crazy thing is, four steps, oh, that doesn't sound like a lot, but, but when you told cell, me that... Yeah. I was like, that means that every single cell of animation that was painted and inked and all that stuff now needed an extra four steps Yeah, to do. And it's just like 24, just think about like, I don't know, 24 frames per second? Is mm-hmm. that what a movie is? So yeah. 24 pictures, you had to light four different ways. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's nuts. Thankfully, cartoons weren't in the whole movie, you know, so they got breaks, but still. 
Yeah, they they saved a lot of time when they threw. Uh, there's that scene where they throw Roger in the back, and they're having this whole talk about, <clears throat> like Judge Judge Doom comes out and he's talking to. He's like, "Hey, is this Roger Rabbit?" And they're like, "No, he's not here." And he starts doing the whole shaving haircut thing. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and so they save a lot of money because he's like in the back somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> they actually had stand-ins too. Like, oh, that's right. You told me that. Like apparently, uh, there's like a. I've seen a lot of videos on this movie, and a lot of them always point out that, like, in other animated, I don't know what you would call them, like, live-action animation uh, hybrid films, I Mm -hmm. guess, whenever an actor is looking at a cartoon character, they always seem to be looking past them. Yeah. As opposed to, like, at them. Yeah, because they're trying to do this thing where it's like, just turn and look, because if we have, like, a clean... Yeah, just pretend there's a rabbit there. Exactly, you know? Yeah. Um... But in Roger Rabbit's case, they had, like, these plastic, these, like, foam. I don't know what they were, but they were, like, these stand-ins that they used. So, so they, that they could get the eye levels correct, and they could get, like, the the feel of it. Yeah, it's, like, these little subtle touches that made the movie, like, they really sold it, you know? I'm just thinking back to last week's podcast, where I talked about, we were talking about Mortal Kombat. This uh-huh. same scenario, but done completely differently, because you're saying that they took the time... To put a stand in so they could have the actor react to something physical that's there. Right. And then the director at Mortal Kombat, when Luke King has to grab Reptile, quote unquote, yeah. off the wall, <laughs> the actor's like, yeah, they told me to just grab something and struggle with it and then just throw it. And they'll yeah, add it you know, in later. Because you, you can actually tell that his hands aren't grabbing something solid. They're like, his hands are in two different places, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, exactly. It, it doesn't make any sense because he's just grabbing his, and then the director's yelling at him, it's biting you, it's biting you, so now, now throw it. <laughs> so it's, it, uh, I know that scene is like two seconds, but at the same time, there's like a world of difference between that and like Roger, Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit, yeah. It, and Roger Rabbit was made way before that. You know what, actually, there's a, I didn't know this, but like, I didn't know it was a famous scene, but one of the scenes in the movie is um, the one where he's in the back room of the bar. Mm-hmm. There's a swinging lamp. Yeah. They had a light him accordingly with the scene oh so just imagine like the light passing roger rabbit yeah they had to animate the light swinging past him oh that's scene. crazy yeah and if you look at apparently his ears uh-huh you know how the cartilage on your ear has like a transparency yeah when light shines through it uh you can see through roger rabbit's ears when the light hits because uh because like ears they have thin cartilage so it's like <laughs> wow that is a lot of yeah a lot of a lot of care to take into something that's probably going to be missed by millions of people yeah I, it's, yeah it's a shame like uh, that movie uh kubo and the two strings that came out apparently lost a bunch of money but it was like it looked i didn't get to see the movie um because I, I don't get to see much many movies these days it's actually on netflix oh we should watch that yeah i, I saw it actually it was it was pretty good I liked because it. They while that movie was coming out, the my Tumblr is just I only use my Tumblr really to follow artists, right? right? That's all it is. And a bunch of people who had worked on it and were fans of it were posting these gifts of people like working on it. Working on it. Yeah, that's and, and the like green a ton like of work. So what anything, they did is anything stop motion, right? It's, oh my gosh, it's so much work. Um and what it was is there was like a dragon flying right in in space like there was just green behind it mm-hmm. and then every step of the way they showed this guy adjusting this long snake claymation thing and then they would just speed it up to be like the full motion i was like every single time he oh, was yeah. tweaking it and but it was like floating in and every time they had to move the green screen behind it so they could cut it out later i, I, was, I, was, I know what you're talking about they did they did something <clears throat> similar with Coraline. did They're, they there's like a gif of the guy like in every shot of the yeah and the as they're moving it right and then they they like transition from actual time to the cart like the the the, the cartoon yeah like the film exactly yeah. the the one that was really impressive to me one because they had the dragon one they had a couple other ones but there was this one particular one where I was like that expression of motion and puppeteering was amazing and it's one I forget who it is but there's a monkey. Like a, that has like a samurai sword, and he jumps on this. He's on this boat, and he jumps from one platform on the boat to another, and then does a roll. Uh-huh. And there's like a tuck, and then there's like the stop action where he like 
does a pose at the end uh-huh. and they show the transition from those things and show how many like poles were there holding him in place that were all green screen i was like not only is a person animating that in real time like they're just doing that and taking the shots just like they always do but then somebody has to go in and clean up every frame yeah and take out all the green put in the right lighting blah blah, blah and do all this because the lighting didn't look it looked like everything was not lit like in the movie in the movie it was all blue and nighttime and blah blah, blah and that was just lit like yeah i didn't even think about that the lighting has to be done so that it exactly. looks like it's... Exactly, and then they do the background and all that, so it's just, like, even with all the technology of doing, you know, CG and all this, the, that puppeteering stuff looks way better yeah. than a lot of CG films that I've seen. Yeah, there's and some CG in it, you can tell. There the is, part. but the main part of it is all, is uh, all animation. You can tell what is and isn't CG. I remember when we went to Universal uh, Studios. Uh-huh. They have, like, that museum of all this, like... Uh, I think they had, like, the DeLorean in there. Yeah. But they also had um, the set of Coraline, and then they had the box trolls. Yeah. They had, like, all of their faces, like, all the different expressions they have. Wow. And I was like, good God. <laughs> like, this it's... is so much work, and no offense, but, like, no one saw that movie. You know? Box trolls? No. Coraline? I, I, there's kind of a following to it. Yeah, it had, like, a Tim burton vibe. Yeah, I don't think it was him, but no, no. But I think I, I think people like that movie enough where there there's a bit of a following because I see Coraline art pop up every so often on my Tumblr, and it's just like it's people who work on it and things maybe. But I'm a little burned out on Tim Burtony stuff. I was looking up who it was. It's Paul Rubens. I think he but, does. He did. A, I think he did Nightmare Before Christmas and Coral and yeah, that one. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Because it kind of has the same vibe. It's like these skinny, skinny figures. It's and like probably world, Corpse Bride, too. Yeah, I don't know. I I um I always hear Nightmare Before Christmas is really good, but I've never actually seen it. It's good. <laughs> no, it's a good movie. Yeah, I hear the songs are really good, and I hear I hear everything about it is really good. I just... I yeah, see, the like, culture I behind... See, it's the fans, right? <laughs> I see everyone wearing, like, Nightmare Before Christmas <laughs> shit. Like, it's, at, it's all over Walmart and, like... Hot topic, and I just <laughs> I just can't take the movie seriously. But I mean, that shouldn't stop me. I'll, I'll definitely get around to I, it. I know? think if you watch it, you'll be like, "That yeah, was a good movie." Yeah. It's it's not. I think the, the 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 specialness or whatever came from the fact that Disney did a kind of a dark movie. Okay. Kind yeah. of, and I say kind of because it's not a very it's a very lighthearted movie. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But it's like a very Disney villain kind of atmosphere i mean yeah. i like uh, some of the designs and you know? yeah i mean tim, like i've seen some of the original drawings that tim burton did for it that guy loves, they're cool he loves stitches apparently yeah <laughs> and and like the original version of uh of jack skellington is very skinny very like it to me it looks like something that you could puppeteer very easily you know oh, okay. what i mean yeah so uh, maybe that's why the character design was made that way but I think it is the culture that I can't like everybody wearing that Jack Skellington like beanie and blah yeah, blah. Yeah, it's all over cars and shit, you know. <laughs> people like say, have... "I she's the Sally to my Jack." Yeah, or like, like people oh, have yeah. like uh, his head on like the back Everything. of their car and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like being. I don't know. Is it the same thing as like? I think I think that's with everything Tim Burton though. I remember um, that Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie. I like that and movie. And like, Alice in Wonderland and stuff. Like, all, there's always merchandise for those films at Hot Topic and stuff. Yeah. So. I remember, I remember that year during Halloween, those weird glasses uh-huh. that they wear uh, during the TV portion of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Okay. Those were everywhere. Because I think somebody got, like, the mold to that and just started churning them out everywhere i just thought it was a weird movie i remember it's a weird movie but i think it's enjoyable and you know what i don't usually say that about movies that tim burton remakes i remember well yeah you when you got the the dvd you like were watching the behind the scenes yeah and like the oompa loompas is just one guy right but he's yeah like, he's like it's, it's 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 kind of interesting like one dude and then they just composited well, him like it, 15 million times there's a part where they're doing a beatles you know like yeah reference or whatever the fuck you want to call it yeah and he's just like yeah they made me learn four different instruments instead of just having me like and i'm like that sucks dude like, i forget to, what the, I got for a fucking beatles reference like 
You're gonna make. Hey this... man, that guy got a lot of work. <laughs> I forget what his name is. Like Better Roy have something. Paid very well. <laughs> but you know, it worked for the like. I appreciated the attempt, uh-huh. and I the mean, movie yeah. was. I mean, the music. Most people. I mean, I'm not a huge Oingo Boingo fan, but apparently everybody who who knows Oingo Boingo was like, oh, that's, those are all just remixes of all their songs. Oh, it's really? Like, well, I mean, yeah. Well, it's again, it's whatever. I don't know because I'm not a fan of that. But <clears throat> that's all I was hearing. And to be honest, I mean. You could do. I mean, you could do worse, right? I mean, as Danny it, Elfman, right? It, yeah. So he's just using some of his old stuff to make something new. That guy makes very good music. Um, I wouldn't say Ongo Obo- Ongo Boingo <laughs> is 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 part of that, but I do like the Batman animated soundtrack. You know, the Batman animated show soundtrack. Yeah. I do like great. the Simpsons and the Batman films? <laughs> yeah. He makes good music. I just. I think that band was kind of a. I think he was ex- maybe it was an experimental <laughs> thing. I don't know. He found his. his you know what? His, his he made calling. money. He's yeah. still making money. Good for him. <laughs> still, I like that movie. I think it was just a, that it was a different attempt. Like everybody, everybody who's watched the old one, is pretty in love with it. The Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, Did they make a sequel to it? No. No. Okay. There's no sequel to it. I think. Well, there is, the, book... the books have sequels. Oh, the right? books have sequels. Yeah, it's like, it's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, then Charlie and the Glass Cock. Ceiling. <laughs> no, Damn it! I... <laughs> you got it's, there before yeah, I did. Glass elevator or something. I don't know. <laughs> Fucking look it up. Anyway, the glass elevator. Oh uh, yeah, because remember they take off into the glass elevator at the end. Never seen it. No, you've never seen either of those. I saw the the remake only. That's it. You've never seen the original. No. The original is better, in my opinion, not just for nostalgia's sake, but you've seen the newer one. In the newer one, there's like two minutes of them like saying, oh, by the way, this kid found one of the golden tickets. Uh huh. And then they just run through them really quick. Okay. In the old version, it's like maybe 20% of the I think movie. I have. I think I have seen the old one. I just don't remember it very well. It was a well, I back. mean, they, they do a lot more... They do a lot more of their quote, like what I say is like they did some of their homework where they're like, you know, you got to make sure that you know that this kid is poor. You got to make sure that people are going crazy for Wonka. Make sure he goes to a restaurant and asks for water. <laughs> he doesn't order a drink. He gets water. No, it's just they do a lot of stuff where like, first of all, Charlie has his own song where his mom's like, hey, cheer up, Charlie. OK. And because she's um, she's working two jobs. And he goes to visit her at night, and then he's just like, "I'm never gonna get one of them golden tickets." And she's, you know, you know, you cheer up. And he has his own song. And then one of the things that I really like is they go through this little montage of people doing whatever they can to get these chocolates, because okay. apparently it's that bad. It's like that coveted, coveted. These tickets are that coveted. At one point, this this guy is getting a uh, like he's seeing his therapist. Uh-huh. And he's like, I keep having this dream where somebody, this angel comes down and whispers where the, where a golden ticket is. And then the therapist goes like, what did he tell you? He's like, what does it matter? It's just a dream. He's like, tell me where the ticket is, you know. Oh, that's funny. The, see, that's more lighthearted. Yeah. And in, in the newer one, it's just like they show shots of people just going crazy over the chocolate bars. But there's nothing to it. In the new one, it's it's just it's just uh, some it's, guy it's selling just, just, the they're, guy they're, selling the tickets on eBay and <laughs> because there's two things like in the in the newer mo- movie they have the beginning before the factory they have the factory and then they have the part after the factory. I bet. I mean, I'm sure Tim Burton's focus was just Willy Wonka himself. Yes, that's the difference between the two movies. The first one is like focused on Charlie, and the second one is focused on Willy Wonka. Okay. Because you got it. You paid Johnny Depp like how many millions of dollars? That you got to give him is, some FaceTime. You know what I mean? That guy's married to fucking Johnny <laughs> Depp, dude. Because he Listen, was in man. Alice in Wonderland as well, right? He is in Alice in Wonderland. He was... You know what he wasn't in was... He was probably in The Corpse Ride. I'm pretty sure he is the voice of the cor- the, the groom that marries her. Hmm. The Corpse Ride. Um, I was very surprised he wasn't in uh, that Planet of the Apes because he redid that one. But they made a sequel to Alice in Wonderland then. Yes, and he's in it. Okay, that's yeah. what I was thinking. It's of. Alice Through the Looking Glass, I think it's called. Okay. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, he's he's in everything else. I mean, again, I like the new one. I love the old one better, but you know, I, it's just not a I don't know, when I watched Charlie and Chocolate Factory, they were like, "Oh, this is a children's classic." 
uh-huh. and then they showed it to us. The new one didn't feel like a children's classic. It felt like this. Let's make this for the people who watch the classic. That that movie is also like a, the type of movie where people are like, oh yeah, this movie is like fucking sick, dude. It's so <laughs> it's so crazy, dude. It's so trippy. Like you gotta check this movie dude, out, dude. It's dark. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking secretly dark, dude. And I just remember watching and thinking like it was it was yeah it was cool. It was cool. There was nothing. There was I, nothing I really dark about it. I don't it. really remember it. That's why I said it. I probably didn't like well, it that well, much. And see, it's not even that dark because, like, in the original movie, there is a there is a hint that the kids died. Okay. But they never really go back to it, right? All right. Because, like, for example, one of the girls, she just wants everything now. That's she's a spoiled brat, right? right? She has a song about that. Which she has. Uh, they all do. Oh, okay. And the old one is like, there's this, there's this. Uh, there's this place where these ge- geese are laying eggs. And she's like, I want one. And he's like, no, you can't have one. And then she goes into her whole song where she's wrecking his stuff. And then there's a little counter and where the falls, eggs... falls. She falls right. through the egg yeah, the yeah. egg thing because it says good egg, bad egg. And oh, if it's and a bad a egg, egg, it goes through until the furnace. Yeah. Right. And when she falls through the furnace, she's like, hey, do me a favor, Oompa Loompa. Go take them down. He's like, we empty the trash every Thursday. So there's a chance that she hasn't gone to the furnace just yet. But why don't you go ahead and take her down? Okay. It's like because you might get lucky. Uh-huh. In the new one, at the end of the movie, Charlie spoiler well, alert. Down. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Charlie gets the factory. Uh-huh. Um, she, uh, they're floating above the castle. His like factory in the glass elevator. Uh huh. And like you see them all come out, and they're perfectly uh, fine. Well, they're alive. And there's a firing squad. Think. <laughs> they just all being just shot. All get gunned down. But see, like that—that that was kind of cool because you didn't, you didn't. First of all, you didn't care what happened to those kids because they're terrible kids. Yeah. But it was kind but of it leaves a lot to the imagination. Exactly. That's right. what it did. I get you. Yeah. See, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a huge fan of remakes, and that's I know that's a very popular opinion. But I think an attempt to make a remake is not a bad thing. I don't know if that's a that's a, an opposing view. But I, it could I don't, be well, good, could be bad. I don't know. I don't know. You like you like remixes of music, and I uh, I would say that's the same thing as like it's a, not the same as thing. like a reboot or a rehash. It's not the same thing, man. The music, the music <laughs> scene is totally different than the movie scene, wouldn't you say? There's there's so much difference there. So you want to see Baywatch and the Mummy? And... <laughs> I can't can't watch you can't the Mummy defend, with Tom can't Cruise. Those. those are hard to defend. The Mummy with Tom Cruise. I just picture it being exactly like Mission Impossible. So it's just going to be him like clinging to the side of an airplane while the mummy is... I wasn't like a huge fan of the original, so I don't really care. I had... My wife loves the mummy. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's more because she she really likes Brendan Fraser. Okay. Um, And this, like, he's... A, he's like, this is Brendan Fraser at the top of his game, right? Sure, he's a hot dude. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what to say. Hot nineties action. I don't even know. I don't really like any of his movies, so I, I, I can't really say. Anything. Name like three of them. He's a monkey bone, right? <laughs> That's him. Is that him? Yes. I think I've seen that movie, and I didn't like it. I didn't think it was funny. I never even watched Monkey Bone. I totally forgot about that movie. What yeah. the hell is Monkey Bone? I don't. It just. Appeared. I mean, you watched it, right? You know, it, that movie just appeared at my house one day. <laughs> I didn't know where it came from. There's a claymation monkey in it. That's about all I know. Is there? And I think somebody's dead. Yeah, Chris Kattan is in it. Chris Kattan? Yeah, he's like the dead version of that's him or something. That's awful. That's just awful. Well, if it's that awful, maybe I should watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> monkey bone? Like, I thought you were going to say Blast from the Past or George of the Jungle. Okay, Any of those George of the Jungle. Okay, so you've seen that one. Yeah. That one's pretty bad, but I, I mean, it's really supposed like, to be a comedy. I don't so really like, like him trying to be funny. Me neither. I don't really like that cheesy if smile he, he gives all the time. Like, if he's trying to be like, a, oh, you know what? Uh, Looney Tunes. He's in Looney Tunes. Back in action. Yeah, and he's trying to act all silly, and I'm like, I don't like this. You're not a, you're not silly. He in doesn't it. act silly in it. He kind of does. No, he doesn't. Uh, he, I just watched that movie. He's paired up with Bugs Bunny, isn't he, he? No, he's not. See, you haven't seen that movie. Is it Daffy? Yes. Okay. Because Daffy gets fired. And then Daffy gets Bre- like Brendan Fraser because Brendan Fraser is trying to be an actor. Okay, I don't think we need to go. In- I don't think we need to go into this. But we were talking about the Mummy. <laughs> the Mummy, like, listen, I've had to watch that movie a couple different, like, a million times. You like that one? That's good. I like it because it's an action adventure, but it's 
I'm not saying it's at the level of Indiana Jones, but it's keeping that theme where it's all like there's real danger. Okay. And yeah. they're just there's part, parts of it that are a little more lighthearted. Yeah, and at the time it was original too, so I give a point. Well, it was a that. remake. Was it? Dude, there's there's been like four or five mummy films. <laughs> Is that another there was a mummy before the Brendan Fraser one. Yeah, it's the old uni- Dude, the Universal Monster series? Oh, I didn't know that. There's the Mummy, the Curse of the Mummy. Well, and, then like, never mind. Like... Take the points back. <laughs> it gets no points for No, originality. I mean like it's it's a good it's a good remake. I think it's a good remake and it's um it, like I said, it kept the danger there. The mummy was scary. The CG kind of sucks now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's parts of it that look okay. But see, this is like... It, it was good. They did a good job with it. But with Tom Cruise, they're going so, like... I don't know. I just, like I said, I picture the, him doing the Mission Impossible thing. I think they always have to do that when they reboot or rehash something. It's like... They have to, they have to make the old one look like shit in comparison by, like, um... Like scale wise, you know, but, this one has to be bigger and but here's here's more what I don't expensive get expensive than the original, you know. Right. Okay. But here's what I don't get. Right. They the the original mummy they had like stars in it, right? Right. And then when they remake it, they take this up and coming guy, Brendan Fraser, because at the time he had make a couple movies and people seemed to like him. And they make that, and now the newest one, they're trying to re relaunch it again, and instead of getting some young 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 guy, uh-huh. they get Tom Cruise. They want you to see it. That's that's. I mean, is he? Is that's their angle here. I know he's a megastar. I know he's, Tom Cruise is a megastar. Hey, but man, people like those Mission Impossible. The the he made like two new ones, right? I lost count. Well, he made a couple new ones, I believe, and people liked them. So. I guess. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just that, like, maybe it's the Johnny Depp thing. I haven't seen any of those either. But think about all the movies Johnny Depp has done. People like people. Yeah, still... they're doing a new Pirates of the Caribbean. It just came out. Like, oh, it just, just came out. out. It just came out. It's called Dead Man Tell No Tales. I, I, I heard it. It already got like critically panned on on uh, <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. So, well, it's the fifth movie in a series, I think. I remember and, like, watching... how much. I remember watching the first one and really liking it. Okay. I don't. I never saw the second, the third one, or the fourth one. I hear they all go. They go downhill after the first one. Well. The fact that Orlando Bloom was like, no, I'm not doing the second one. Oh, really? Already? Already. The second <laughs> one. No, wait. Was he? You know what? I can't remember. But I just know he's he's not in a lot of them. And then it was a big deal with this one because Orlando Bloom came back. Oh, okay. But, when's the last, but after after he did Lord of the Rings, does that guy ever need to work a yeah. day in his life? Well, I, I was going to say, I remember seeing the first one. And thinking, why the fuck does everyone like this movie? <laughs> I mean, okay, I like the music. The music, the music was, was the best part of I that movie. I actually think the music is John Williams, isn't it? It might not be. Uh, I don't know. It was really catchy, though. But I, I remember really liking the it. music, yeah, like the... Is that how it goes? Yeah, yeah, you got it right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah even just that little part yeah. you gave me. See, that's the thing. It's like, good music. It was good. It was... But, like, I, I just remember thinking, like, I don't like Jack Sparrow. I thought, I thought the twist was really predictable i don't know i mean sure it was well made it, it was looked... it was well made had a good cast of characters yeah i'm sure the cg holds up too i i can i can watch that movie again and like it okay i can there is a bit of a twist in it that yeah exactly the, the twist in it is the down part of it because once you see the twist and you watch it again you're like oh okay you know what i mean like you lose some of that spark okay so that's why I've never really gone back to watch it because there's like a, you know, that's like a, that whole thing about once you know the story of Fight Club, it's not so entertaining the second time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it can't blow your mind. Either. Right. Exactly. That's that's what it is. It can't blow your mind. I just remember that one scene where he's uh, where he's like introduced, and he's on a sinking ship. That's hilarious. And I was like, oh, that was pretty cool. That's a great way to intro that I character. Feel like the, yeah, and then I feel like the rest of the movie was kind of just like, all right, now it's just Johnny Depp. Being him like this fucking drunk. <laughs> See, this is guy. like that's why movies are like, man. That's why I like movies sometimes because, like for example, we, we've we've watched Indiana Jones like how many different million times? Oh, I love Indiana. And Jones. Indiana Jones always gets these awesome intros, like in the first one he comes in under like he whips a guy's gun out of his hand and yeah. then comes out of the shadows. It's all cool. Second one, he's all dressed like James Bond. Yeah. And then there's this whole musical production. And the second one has such a strange intro. Like... It does. It does in a way where you're like, "What is this, Indiana Jones?" And then 
after that little intro it goes back to being Indiana Jones. But at the same time, still feels like Indiana Jones. Yeah, some guy just gets shot, remember? <laughs> <laughs> just like right in the beginning. Yeah. And in the third one, I believe he goes from he goes from being a kid to an adult and yeah. like they does the hat thing. That one was like always, that was great. That was always my favorite one cuz I yeah. love like his little origin story. I mean, I'm sure some people might have thought like, "Oh, this is lame." But I was like this is David, fucking cool. This they, is the stuff I this is the stuff I love. I eat this shit up like <laughs> That movie was that, in my opinion, this is the best one because, um, first of all, they end this like, in terms of Steven Spielberg, that's where he wanted to end the series. Uh-huh. So he literally has the characters riding off into the sunset. Yeah, like the old school spaghetti western stuff. They're just riding off, like the whole ending, uh, ending sequence is them riding out. Yeah, but like they do the thing where they go from like his childhood to you know dealing with his dad. So him there's and, a whole him and Sean Connery are like so fucking good together. Yeah, I love they them really in that are. Film. And I, and I even like how they explain two things in that movie that hadn't been explained throughout the entire series. Like his scar? His scar under his chin right. and then why he hates snakes. Oh, yeah. Okay, the snake thing was kind of like... All right. I, oh, wait. Sure. Three things. What? The introduction of the whip. And the hat, too, right? The guy, yeah, some guy... Thing. Oh, shoot. Four things. Yeah. Well, see, like... I love that movie just because there's a different side of India you haven't seen. Yeah. Plus, it sets up... Right in the beginning, it sets up... Me and my dad have always been at odds. Yeah. So, like, the third one is a father and son, like, uh, what is it? Quarrel. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, I really like that because it got a little more personal with Indy. Because the second one was just bananas, in my opinion. You got, like, Indy saving kids. And Third- he's got a little sidekick with him. Yeah. It's just, like, it's just bananas when you think about Indiana Jones. But I still I still like that movie. Don't there, get me there's, wrong. Um... There's like miniature stuff in that movie that I didn't. Dude, I, I didn't even notice until I watched it uh, recently. Yeah, and when, I was like, man, it's pretty well done. The, like, the minecart. I I had no idea the minecart scene was miniaturized. Yeah. That shows you how great miniatures are. Yeah. Like they could do all the CG in the like they did CG in the fourth one, which is like the spaceship and the God. and the space aliens and everything. <laughs> And like I said, CG has its place and everything, but the miniatures in the minecart right? I was like, what? This is miniature? And and then in the behind the scenes, it'll cut between the scenes that are miniature and the ones that are like live yeah, action. That's why you and don't really notice seamless. That. Yeah, exactly. It's so great. Um, I mean, part two, like, when I saw it again recently, I was actually like, it's not as bad as I used to think it was. No, not at all. Like, it's, it's still pretty damn... It's still a fucking indie movie, you know? Like so. It is. It's just like they... Okay, so they had the success with the first one. And what they did was pretty smart. They're like, listen, we got to take some risks. You know, we got to we gotta try something different. Let's try giving him a sidekick. Let's let's make it like life and death. Let, let's just try to make it a little scarier. Mm-hmm. You know, see if the audience can take it. Because like in the first one, you're looking for the Holy Grail. You know, people get, you know, they get the, what is it? The, um, the face melted and all that stuff. And that's all at the end. But in the second one, you get somebody's heart being ripped out. You get yeah. the burning. You get kid labor. Yeah, and then <laughs> Indy, Indy raised, bitch slaps a kid. Like, yeah, they, they went pretty... They raised all the stakes. <laughs> they had to make the first one look like a bitch by comparison. And, you know, Indy, like, saves the children. Like, it's, it's so much... Like, yeah. it's so much more, right? And this is kind of... This is different in the, in, than the first one. And this is an accidental adventure of his. Right, because in the first one he's going after the chalice, uh-huh. and this one he kind of just literally falls, falls into, into this one, right? Because there's a whole different adventure he's doing in the first part, um, and uh, in the third one it's the same thing. He's 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 the cross that he chased in the beginning is the same cross that he's getting back right at the end. So it's yeah. just like there's a transition to it and blah blah blah, but there's no accidental like mission or whatever. It's it's all handed to him. The second one was like, hey, you're going to go save our kids. I was like, um, all right, we'll go do that. Yeah. The, third one, the third one doesn't even, um, as far as, like, it doesn't really have, like, a girl in it either. It does, but, she, like, early on you learn that she's, like, a traitor. But, see, that's the great thing about the third one. The third one you're like, oh, man, Indy always gets the girl. Yeah. But then they twist that part on you and they're yeah, like. Yeah, and he doesn't. And it, He did. Well, he yeah, got the girl. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying. <laughs> but so did his dad. <laughs> yeah. But what I was, my point is, like, you get yeah. the, uh, him and his dad are the focus of the film. It's right. not really like 
a love story like the other ones are. Yeah, see, the third one took a, took some risks, but what they did is they focused on the the cool part, which is the relationship between Indy and his dad. They've been. You know what I thought was weird? There's a scene where he they're both tied up in the chair, mm-hmm. and then he he says something to the effect of like. Good thing I brought my lucky lighter or something, and he has uh. like a he has like a lighter with a shamrock on it. And I was like, "Good thing, You're like, what the fuck? You've never had that lighter before. Like, what did I miss between two and three? <laughs> maybe start, maybe you picked up smoking. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is fucking weird, but whatever, you know. I think that was just one of those things they wrote in. Um, Andy would have a lighter, right? Yeah, yeah, he has a lighter. Let's yeah. just throw that in there. Or Harrison Ford was like, "I have this lighter on me, and I really like it. Can we just like?" <laughs> Working on the film somehow. You know what's funny is I I'm I don't know why they gave it to Indy either. His dad was right there. He could have been like <laughs> yeah, he's like Dad, you still have that lighter? You yeah. know he could he could have introduced it a different way. It, yeah, but he's like, right. good thing I have my lucky lighter. And then TM comes up while yeah. they like you can buy this at yeah maybe they were trying to sell it maybe they sold that lighter I don't know maybe Zippo sponsored <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe who knows? <laughs> good thing I have my Zippo lighter patent pending. Yeah. <laughs> available at uh, 7 11 oh man that, and that scene goes bananas cause like they drop it on the floor and then it lights the entire room yeah. on fire it was like what is was were all the curtains soaked in kerosene or something yeah. I just I, that I, always I, happens in movies man it's like uh, something lights on fire and then everything <laughs> lights on fire gotta love that movie magic and then they did see and like here's here's the crazy part like the fourth one I know everybody hates that movie, and for good reason, but the weird thing is that if you look at the decisions made to make that movie, they seem good. You know what I heard about part four, actually? I was watching the behind the scenes. On, oh, no, it wasn't that. It was, uh, I think, Red Letter Media. Oh, yeah, the Mr. Plinkett review. They did a video on it. And, yeah. And he says, he says Steven Spielberg had all this shit worked out, and then George Lucas came in and it was like, Maybe there should be monkeys. <laughs> and like, he made all these terrible suggestions, and and Steven Spielberg was like, uh, fine. "I'm really." He's you like, know, "Fine, just, whatever. Yeah, just let him, just, just let him have those ideas. Oh. Like, just fuck it, whatever." You know, what's really funny is that when Mr. Plinkett says, like, he's like, "Why does he get to make all of those decisions? Is it because he's bankrolling the whole thing?" He's like, "Oh, right, he is bankrolling." Oh, probably, I was like, "That's yeah. why." But it's there are it's, some good scenes in that movie. I remember he's, the, he, but here's the thing, like when it's, him it's his, when him and uh, him and Mutt. Shia LaBeouf, yeah, just call him Mutt. Mutt are on the the motorcycles. Yeah, that, that part's seems fun. Awesome, where they're like getting chased and stuff. I like that. Yeah, scene. it seems very Indiana Jones, exactly, right? Yeah. But that's a, that's one of the points I wanted to bring up is, and he, the, the Mister Plinger review brings this up too. Is like it's it's a natural, um, it's a natural point that, you know, Indy had father issues, uh-huh. and now he's. He doesn't know it at the time, but he's kind of fatherly in that when Mutt comes to him and he wants to do all this stuff, he kind of is teaching him things while they're on their adventure. Oh, yeah. I do you like know? that. Yeah. And there's moments where you can see that he's like influencing him. Right, right. And like, it's not like Shia LaBeouf's a bad actor, neither is Harrison Ford, but it's like the stuff that they decided to focus on is weird. And that's probably all more George Lucas or whatever. Uh-huh. And they were trying to, it felt like. And I don't know if Mr. Pinkett touches on this, but they're like, they're trying to make this movie really family friendly. So it's like, they didn't want to offend any religions. They it, it, they didn't want to do like a thing where they were like, oh, you know, these fill in the blank people and their weird religion, blah, blah, blah. So they just made it some generic uh, tribe in, in Mexico where they... They, they they like these aliens. Like, I'm like they say what? That, I, I you know? guess like a lot of... Uh... There was a lot of Crystal Skull stuff going on at that time. Like was it? The, yeah, there was a lot of documentaries on. I don't know. It just that whole thing could have worked. I, I think, I think the I think at some point the script did work. I just, but I think all these different things that they decided to add were Harrison weird. Harrison Ford is just old man. Just let him die already. <laughs> just like, not that I want him to die, but, but just a, leave him alone already. But here's the thing, wouldn't it? Like, would you agree that uh, Sean Connery? He wasn't useless. Right. Indy was saving him a lot of the time, which is, you know, a great part of him. But there was these parts where Sean Connery will be like, let's just do this. And then he does the thing with the umbrella. And, like, there's clever parts to him because, you know, he's he's an educated Jones. You know, he's a educated man. Yeah. 
So he's not useless. And I felt like what they should have done is made it seem like Mutt was doing more of the actiony stuff. Uh-huh. And Indiana Jones was more like the experienced dude. But they tried to do They're still Harrison tr- Ford all, you know. I it's cuz they still needed Indy to be Indy, you know? They, yeah. What I know what you're saying. They could have made Mutt the 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 star of the film. They really should have. And had had it been like the passing the torch kind they of thing. They totally should but have. But even at the end of the movie, it's like it makes it look like like, oh, Mutt's going to grab the hat and put it on, but then it's he's like, in nah, I'm like, taking that hat. He's like, nah, sorry. I'm married, so I'm, uh, yeah. I'm totally free to go on adventures and I like stuff. money. <laughs> I like money. I'm going to keep doing these movies. Sorry. You really should stop. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like there was, there was like there was a good script in place at some point. Yeah. And I think... And then Lucas came and fucked it up. <laughs> I, I don't want to blame it all on Lucas because there's all these people who are also on the team. Yeah. Right? Because like... They say, like, what is it? George Lucas ruined my childhood or whatever. Like, the prequels were horrible. Okay, great. Get over it, right? But, you, you know, know there's, I, there was a lot of people involved with with making these films. So just, you can't just put it all on one person. It just kind of, yeah. Like, the prequels, I only saw them once. Those turned That's into, enough. Those turned into those kind of films where I was like, after I've seen it once, I'm like, I don't think I ever need to watch that movie again. And the same thing with The Crystal Skull. I saw it once and I was like, you know what? We don't ever have to watch that movie again. It's not like a movie I walked out on. It's not that it's so bad. No, we bad. saw it in theaters. And yeah, we saw it in theaters, and I it's re- just like, we watched it, was like, eh, it was good. I remember we went somewhere afterwards to eat, and we were all just kind of like, so what was with the monkeys? <laughs> like, what the fuck was that about? But there was weird moments. Like, there was weird moments in Indiana Jones, and... Not like that. There was weird moments in Indiana Jones. For example, when... Like maybe Temple of Doom. No, not even just in Temple of Doom. In in uh, a lot of people say they don't like that scene in in Last Crusade with the birds, where he uses the yeah, to, to scare dumb. the birds. No, no. Then... Here's here's the, here's the weird part. The part in the 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 Crusade, Last Crusade, right? Okay. Where Indy drives into a tunnel, and then a plane follows him. Yeah. The wings get cut off, and then you see this weird like freaking Abbott and Costello looking moment where he's driving and looking at the guy and then the airplane's going right past him and the guy's like what 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 was going on and then and then it exits out the other side and we're like what is this that's funny though see it's done well though okay I think the monkeys was supposed to be like oh look mud swinging with the monkeys Monkeys is different (laughs) monkeys is not good that is not good I don't think there's any way to defend that I'm sorry I'm not defending it's a, it's a, it. I'm saying that it's there a greaser is... in a leather jacket <laughs> swinging from a vine with monkeys. I don't think you can defend that. Listen, I'm not here to defend it. I'm just saying that wackiness is is there's wacky moments part, in all the mil- part movies. Of Indiana Jones. And I think they were going. It's like when somebody tells a bad joke and it just hangs there. I think that's what it is. They attempted a joke and it just didn't fall. You know what I mean? I didn't, I, sorry, it didn't land. What about the part where... Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> there's a part where, like, ants eat a guy. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that, that part. That was kind of weird, too. I was, <laughs> they were all CG and stuff. and. Yeah, I remember, like, they they create, a, they create like, a tower of ants to try and get to him. Oh. Do you remember this part? I, 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 I do now that you're saying it. And then they, like, they almost get him, and then he, like, starts squishing a bunch of them because he's a big, tough man or whatever. But they do eventually eat him. I mean, you could say the thing, the same thing about like. Oh no, wait, that's that's a different movie. Never mind. I was gonna make this whole thing about oh the Beatles eat him, but that's the Mummy. Yeah. <laughs> Again, your movie's confused. Yeah, but and no, there's, there's that, that whole triple agent guy thing too. That was dumb. Yeah. Um, I will give you that 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 Matt character. And what was weird is, like, he comes out in the beginning of the movie, and then he comes out later on when they're on their way there. You know the whole like. Uh... The whole the, the 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 famously bad scene apparently is that the thing where they nuke the fridge. Yeah. And I didn't even uh, I remember when I saw that in theaters, I was kind of just like, whatever. I don't really, I didn't think that, that was nuke that. the fridge thing was not as, like yeah yeah of course like <laughs> the thing is that he gets really lucky a lot of the times. Right. Like that that part in in Temple of Doom where he he does the raft thing. There's no yeah, way that would work. Exactly. Of I, course, I get that, and I and I totally see. It's like, yes, it would have flipped over immediately. That's and why the, totally dumped that's them why out. the fridge thing to me was like, whatever. That's like the that's like the least worst part of this. 
fucking film. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna just, bring the monkeys up again. Like, <laughs> like how does how does how do you top that? Oh man, like that that whole scene where they're getting to, I think it's called Akatar. Okay. Like that's that's the that's the the temple or whatever. Or what? Yeah, they're trying to bring the crystal skull back to to the to the temple to do something, and they don't uh-huh. even know what they're gonna do. <laughs> that's the part that it's really really freaking weird. Is that like in in <clears throat> Raiders of the Lost Ark, they they're taking the the ark to Hitler because he's gonna do something with it. Uh-huh. So they're like, okay, but before you do, let me open it. Like, uh-huh. like it's very clear what they're gonna do, uh-huh. and then in 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 in, um, in Temple of Doom, he's like, I need these stones. They're gonna give me these powers, and you see the powers in action, how it like controls people and blah blah blah. Yeah. And then the Last Crusade, they're like, this cup gives us immortality. That's what we want. Right. All clear. And in the, in the last one, they're like, this skull is gonna give us powers, and they're like, how? How is it gonna give you powers? And they're like, when we get it there, it's gonna happen. So like, Indy helps them get it there. Then, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, it, and then the woman, like, when she gets it, it just, like, kills her or something, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of like they're trying to make it, like, oh, this is, like, you remember Raiders of the Last Ark? This is, like, the whole face burning thing. Okay. They're trying to, like, I, I don't know for sure, but it feels like they're trying to do the same thing. But the weird thing is, is he he knows how to open the, the, the Ark, uh-huh. Right. And he knows that there's something in there that's going to give him powers. He just didn't understand that by doing that, he was praying God's law and blah, blah, blah. So there was like a 50, in his mind, there was a 50 50 chance about it. Uh-huh. But he knew something about it. She just came up with the skull and threw it on the head. <laughs> she didn't know, there was no promise of power. There was no nothing. Also, like the design of the alien, too, if I can. It's an alien. Like, it... what did you want them to do? I mean, it's Indiana. They're they got enough money. Like, do something a little more clever than just and then like this, like the fucking same alien we see in every movie or any T-shirt. You like, know, what, you know what was funny is like the funny thing about it was they tried to like sidestep the whole aliens thing. Is like they're not interplanetary, as in going to space, or whatever. They're interdimensional. Okay. So they're not aliens. They're just another life form that lives in a parallel universe. And I'm like. Okay, and and I'm really stretching it here, but I was like, that's why there's 14 skeletons with 14 heads. It's like there's 14 universes that they live in, and now that all the pieces are back together, this thing becomes whole and it can travel to its... Diff- like, that's what I took from it, uh-huh. but I really doubt that they thought it that far through. Like, they, they this, is, this is something I'm making up, and they'd be like... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what we're thinking. I mean, also the fucking spaceship, dude, or the UFO or uh, whatever. I'm like, okay, it's a flying saucer. All right, whatever. But like, here's the thing, like... I just it, give a little more credit to, to Indiana Jones, you know? I'd like it to like, be a little more... The cool, th- like, the cool thing about Indiana Jones is whenever he does these things, uh-huh. right? Everything either gets buried or, or, like... You know, when he gets the arc... Mm-hmm. Everybody who was there died except for him and Marion. Yeah. Right? So only he knows what happened. Uh huh. And then when he rescues the kids, again, all the people that were there died except for the kids and Indy because yeah. the flood takes out everybody. All right. Okay. Last Crusade. Last Crusade, died. everybody dies except for the four people. But in this one, like, okay, it, most people made it out and everything. But there's this cataclysmic event that happens. Yeah. A whole portion of land just disappears Uh and then it gets flooded with water yeah people are gonna notice what just (laughs) happened you know what i mean like he's like hey there's a tidal wave i I remember the guy says something too he says something like the line is like like a broom to their feet or something and i was like like just sweep it like sweep away their thing no dude there was a temple here that everybody knew and now it's gone i remember when i heard that too i was just like yeah that's pretty convenient that it just but it's not even because it's like saying if one day we woke up and there was like, like hey, a- by the way, one of the three temples of whatever, just the, the pyramids, one of them's just gone and there's a big sinkhole. Yeah. Be like, there'd probably be a couple of investigations as to what happened. Yeah, I you get know, you. I get you. And it just doesn't make any sense that they're just like, well, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> the music starts. Well, they're <laughs> and then it gets married. <laughs> they're gonna make another one apparently, right? 
Shut up. Are you serious? Yeah, that's that's like common knowledge. I'm pretty sure. What? Yeah. When did this get announced? I I don't I don't know when it got announced, but I'm pretty sure it's coming out. So yeah. It's just one of these things where stay you tuned see... for that. Oh no, I don't want to stay tuned for any of this. Well, I'm Jeez. sorry. As long as Harrison Ford's alive, they're gonna squeeze him for every. Why every, don't they just do Air Force? And they should do Air Force Two. That's yeah. what they should do. Is he in that movie? You don't get the joke. Air, Air Force, Force One. One. Okay. Air Force Two. There's no Air. I don't even know if there is an Air Force Two. <laughs> I'm just saying they're probably just gonna do that sequel. He says, "Get off my plane." No, I, I I get it. Say it again. I'll laugh this time. <laughs> I'm not saying it again. <laughs> no. All right. Well. I think we've ragged on uh, George Lucas a little uh, enough for today. I think Indy Four. We've ragged on Indy Four enough. What are the What are the closing thoughts on this argument? <laughs> they should stop making those sequels. Yeah. They should stop because they've just totally lost their way. I don't think. You know, uh, they asked Harrison Ford. Do you, I, I'm sure everybody knows this, but they asked Harrison Ford like, "Hey, a Han Solo movie? Is that something you'd be interested in watching?" Like, and he said, "No, no." <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Harrison Ford read like um Star Wars 7 spoilers in in a minute. Uh I'm pretty sure he read the script for Star Wars 7 was just like Han Solo dies, huh? Yes. Like Dude, thank God. Like, we're going to talk about Star Wars in the next one because I got to get that whole no. Harrison Ford part off my chest cuz we you we both saw episode 7. We haven't seen Rogue One yet, but it's on like whatever. We I have a bone to pick about that whole movie, really? but no, not that saying that it's a bad movie. Uh-huh. I'm just saying I have issues with it. I, I just remember when that scene was building up, I was like, he's dead. There's I call, like I called it as soon as he stepped on board and was like, we're home. Like, I saw the trail. I was like, he's dead. Oh, really? He is dead. <laughs> I, I made that prediction just because, like, when somebody is that beloved uh-huh. and they say things like, we're home, like, we're, we're, we're going to live out the rest of our lives here, blah, blah, blah. It's like in Mice and Men where... That that guy's like, we're gonna have our farm. Yeah. We're gonna do this thing. Tell me the and story then again. Larry yeah. just kills him. Yeah. I was, I was. What was That's it? what was that like? As soon as he came on screen, he was talking about we're gonna we're gonna grab our ship. We're gonna go do a thing, and we're just gonna be done with this. I, think, I was like, he's dead. I think it was that scene. For me, it was that scene where um, Leia's like, bring home our son or something. I was, I was like, like oh, he's not gonna bring him home, dude. He's dead. He's, he's gonna uh, die. <laughs> Yeah. Lay it now, don't say that. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we'll talk about Star Wars on the next episode. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm, it might work its way yeah. there. I'm just saying. Yeah. But yeah. Re- any restrain your restrain. Your I will restrain thing. myself to the next one because you know, I think like those red letter media guys have really been ragging on Star Wars, and I gotta say, I'm like, I'm a little fatigued on Star Wars too. So yeah, I I I feel it. You know, yeah. I feel it. But uh, any closing thoughts? That was pretty much it for me. Uh, I'd, like like you said, Star Wars has been ragged on enough, and so has so has anything George Lucas has touched. So it's pretty much a that Eating well the dead horse. Yeah, that well yeah. has been tapped. Hmm. Um, so that's it for this episode, guys. We'll see you next week. See ya.